We're live, Craig. Oh, I, I can't. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Jesus Wednesday Christ. You for Monday, November 12, 2018. Don't be alarmed. It's me, oh, Greg Miller. Yeah. Alongside the verified one, Tim Geddes. What, Tim Host? This is uh, impressive, is one word. If you're an audio listener, we have uh, the Fallout 76 uh, 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 Power Armor Edition came in today. Unboxed on my Instagram, and I was wearing the helmet. So that I, was a good gag. Honestly? That might be horrible for you, the audio listener, yeah, but the no. video listeners, they fucking it, loved it. Cool, Greg, do they love it in the chat? Be. Oh, they loved it. Loved it's it, not good. It might be. It, uh, it definitely is horrible. <laughs> Um, this thing, it sounds like uh, <laughs> the, the, remember the talk boy? Yeah. Oh yeah. From, yeah. Uh, Home Alone 2. Of course. Yeah. Come on. How do then, I not remember, but remember during that same era? There was the, that like the little kid version of it. That was like the, it looked like a robot that you put the thing in. Oh, and that guy it. was around before then. The guy from Toy Story and the, the penguin uses them and all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He was before. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a very, uh, interesting piece of paraphernalia. No, but honestly, jokes aside, this is pretty freaking legit. Yeah. I remember back in the day, Halo three right. came with the cat helmet. Yep. Exactly. Like, exactly. Well, my thing with it, with it, with this, uh, uh, power armor helmet from fallout 76 was the idea that, okay, cool. There's no way to fit my giant noggin. And then when we unbox it, like, you know what? I put it on. I'm like, it fits my giant noggin. And so yeah. there you go. You got this. I got uh, my pit boys in the other room. Wow. I fought my one on one hoodie. I'm ready to You're go. Ready, dude. I got I'm ready to cosplay, cosplay at any point. Yeah. I'm in. Uh, you can get the Instagram uh, dot com slash game over Greggy where I am not verified. I uh, unboxed that on my IGTV. Uh, is the game any good? I don't know. We talked about this on Gamescast. Yeah. Where it's a very interesting thing that I played two nights of the beta yeah and i can't decide if i like it or don't like it or what mm -hmm. it is i'm very excited still the tonight hopefully that's the key though is that like the two hours you put in made you just want more to decide whether or not i want to play like more it. and see what yeah. it is like yeah I'm, that's I, good I, here's the thing here's my prediction timmy you're coming Predict over for what? dinner tonight because we have to do showcase stuff mm -hmm. and then you're gonna leave and hopefully around that time i'll be able to click on the beta or the mm -hmm. actual fall 76 and get yeah. you know 1201 all that jazz get into it but the first hour and a half is just going to be making my character look good yeah or how i want course. it and then i'll, I'll probably want to get into the actual game and then mm. it's you know we'll figure it out we'll get there one day life man life indeed tim life happens what happened to your face um on saturday we did the xo 2018 uh live reaction right, right, right. Uh, what's good games girls and uh you know we had we had some drinks uh -huh. we had some wine obviously yeah, yeah, yeah of course they were there, they were there. And uh, you, you and Jen left eventually, um, but we stayed and, yeah. and we partied like we do. And uh, we were just drinking. And at some point, Andrea was dancing. It made me laugh uh -huh. so hard that I like. I mean, you can imagine. You've seen me laugh. I'm I've seen you laugh. Emotive. You're animated. And I, I, I swung down. Yeah. Went right onto the wine glass. Wine glass, Ooh. totally fine. My face, absolutely not, okay. not fine. Not okay. It hit me. Blood everywhere. Jeez. Yeah. Well, really that's why. That's why you know you blade. If you're a professional wrestler, you blade up there because the, the forehead bleeds yeah, a lot. Yeah. And it was it was kind of scary because it happened and it was one of the things I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna go to the bathroom to like yeah, see yeah. if there's a mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I look down and everyone looks at me like, oh my god. I'm like, yeah. oh fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah this, that's not what you want. That's not the reaction you want. So I. I don't know. I've been feeling a little loopy the last couple of days. I've had a really bad headache. There's a ringing in this ear. But you know what? <laughs> Here we are. This is more and kind of more. Funny can't stop. The show it must can, go and I'd really like you to go to the doctor after this. We'll this, of course, is kind of funny. Games Daily, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with your questions, comments, concerns, bad PSN names for a little while longer, and everything else under the video game sun. <laughs> then tune in to watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're one of the few thousand watching on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you. Uh, I'm going home for Thanksgiving. So that means I'm getting out of my house and not hanging out with my family. I'm doing a Portillo's meet and greet Saturday, November 24th from one to 3 PM at Bloomingdale, Illinois Portillo's. If you didn't know that's three, or I'm sorry, one, three, four East Lake street. That's the one at Bloomingdale road and Lake uh, street check out my Twitter for more details when I post but it to be clear Yeah, you're trying to get away from your family. It's a to joke. Go meet it's a family. joke. Yeah, yeah. my mom there. of course works at that Portillo's you can swing in and see big old James Kennedy whenever you want at the Lake Street Bloomingdale uh, or no Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bloomingdale Road and Lake Street. It's confusing as I don't, I'm being very specific because a lot of times when you say it's the Pertillos in Bloomingdale, people go to this other one. Yeah. And I want to make sure they're going to they the other exactly one. This is actually one we fell into in the old Game Over Greggy episodes where I called Linda and thought I was talking at one location and I wasn't talking at the right location. Mm, mm. My mom will be there. I'm not sure if she's working or not, 
but she'll be there. Her tweet was amazing. Yeah. Last night she tweets he out said, like, "It's confirmed, Greg's gonna yes, be there, yeah. whatever." Yeah. And he keeps she keeps talking. She's like, "And yes, big old Jamie Kennedy." Parentheses, uh, Greg's mom, comma, also me. Yeah, yeah. Mom, mom, <laughs> mom's on. Her. Mom was uh, uh, riding my ass all weekend about getting the uh, promo art for it. Yeah. For this, and I was just like. Dying. I'm dying because of the showcase. <laughs> Game showcase killing me. I will get you a, a thing by the end of day Monday. We'll see because uh, when am I going to do that? Uh, it's also Thanksgiving next week, as that would point out, which means there's no kind of funny morning show or kind of funny games daily next week. Uh, Game over, Greggy show, games cast, and party mode roll on, though, unaffected. But none of the live shows for the daily stuff. And then... We're excited to say we've teamed up with the ESRB and Penny Arcade for Join the Conversation. Uh, the ESRB and Penny Arcade are working together to start a conversation about video games, ratings, and how to make sure content is appropriate for all ages and interests. We, that being them, want to hear from gamers, parents, and kids about how they use ESRB ratings, parental controls, and other tools to create an appropriate video game environment. You can join the conversation by telling your story and enter to win prizes such as a $25 GameStop Ooh. gift card and a free grand prize trip for four to a 2019 PAX in, the, in North America event of your choosing. Ah. How do you enter? Head over to esrbconversations.org. That's esrbconversations.org. Uh, enter with a story, tip, caption, photo, or video about how you, your friends, and your family use ESRB ratings and other tools to keep video games fun and age appropriate. The contest is judged, so be uh, take your time and be creative. Uh, you don't need to be a parent to enter. They want this to be for everyone to join the conversation. Enter at esrbconversations.org and get all the information and rules there. A cool partnership. It is. I like yeah. that the ESRB finally getting out in front of this and talking yeah. about it. Like, not like, hey, not, let's, 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 let's have a dialogue Exactly. Here. And then they're trying to give away ships to packs, which I'm always about. And then today we're brought to you by Loot Crate and MeUndies and Third Love, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. But it's a soft four. Really, it could be a three and a half, three point one. Well, one of them being the XO stuff. That's a lot. So yeah, well, that's also, true. Really, that's it true. could be thirteen. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But we're going to start with something you wanted to talk about. Yes, there's a Detective Pikachu trailer out yes, today, there is. and you came in and asked me immediately had I seen it, mm -hmm. and I said no, and you said it has no right to be this good. Mm -hmm. To which I thought, whatever, it's Pokemon, and I'm not. You know, it's not my cup, yeah. not my jam. And then I watched the trailer, and it was amazing. It was amazing. I am so excited about this. I was saying on the morning show that I was completely wrong. I misjudged this when they first announced it. I'm like, why Why are they doing this? This is not what people want. This is not yeah. what people are looking for. And after seeing this trailer, I firmly believe that they are making all the right calls uh, to begin what could be a beautiful Pokemon movie cinematic universe. You think it's going to be that big? I honestly think that this, this calling it right now, this has a chance to be the best video game movie we've seen thus far. Hot damn. Which I know isn't that the crazy of a statement. High, yeah, yeah. But there looks like there's so much love and care being put into this. Um, both from a fan perspective of everywhere you look, there's like different Pokemon and, and different like posters referencing different places and right. championships. Like all the regions from like every generation has some type of shout out in this trailer. Um, and I love that they're seamlessly blending the generation one Pokemon that that most people grew up playing yeah. with a lot of the more popular ones of other generations in a way that feels authentically Pokemon of where Pokemon's at gotcha. as a game series, as a, a TV franchise, uh, all of that with Ryan Reynolds and with comedy in a way that'll bring people like you in to be able to understand and get it. Well, that was my biggest thing watching the trailer, right? Is I was like, well, I don't understand the source material really. Like I've played a few here and there, but never at a completion or whatever. Watching the trailer, it was like, oh my gosh, this is just a good movie already. Mm -hmm. I mean, you even not, you can show that to somebody, I think, and they not never even heard of Pokemon, which is hard to do, but watch it and be like, oh, this isn't, tapping into the deep lore of Pokemon that I need to know this, that, and the other, or Ash, or any of that jazz. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, I mean, it sets up so well that, you know, Pikachu and humans, or Pokemon and humans can't talk to each other. This one guy can now talk to Pikachu and what happens from there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super in. I think it looks great. I love the tone they're going for. I think it visually is fantastic. They they somehow managed to blend live action and, and CG Pokemon in it's, a way it that, looks that, really that, that, doesn't, that doesn't come off as like, too cartoony or too mm -hmm. realistic. I like the aesthetic that they've they've designed for it, where it's like, oh man, this this looks like a world that I can believe in. With these humans walking around with these things, it feels it reminds me more of Who Framed Roger Rabbit than it does of uh, Garfield. Sure, no, right? I agree with that hundred percent. That's what important. I, just looking at it from this one trailer glimpse, right? It's doing what I think 
video game movies need to try to do, which is, hey, here are the rules of this universe. It's not a big deal to have these Pokemon walking around. And yeah, the tournaments and being a Pokemon trainer and all that exists, but that's not what this movie's about. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, let's not just adapt the plot of the right, games right. In, in movie form because that doesn't work. Let's create a, a, a world that has all that stuff happening and like you have hints of it, but then show a side that makes more sense as the plot of a movie. And it's crazy because like I going into this, I was like, I want that thing. I want that. You thing. want him to go and still, I do want that thing. And yeah. I, I feel like this is the best way to gateway drug to gateway it. drug. Like if this movie ends with like a end credit scene that like somehow builds up Them some throwing uh, the ball. A, a character or something. Oh my God. Team Rocket it comes great. in. Team so you Rocket. think I'm not paying attention when you talk. I pay attention. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I'm very excited for it. And Ryan Reynolds, man, when is it coming out? Can do no wrong. Oh, I want to say March. Okay. You're going to check for me? I'm going to check right now. Don't bother. You're wronging. We're checking it right now. No, that was the thing is Ryan Reynolds, when he got announced, I was like, oof, that's going to be so hard, right? Of like who Pikachu is in terms of <laughs> uh, <that's a> weird, <laughs> like, who Pikachu, I assume Pikachu is and how he uh, uh, not would talk, but what he would do and how he'd feel. And like, are we going to be able to get, get over? Uh, is it just Deadpool? Is it that the other May watching? 10th. Huh? May 10th. May 10th. Watching that uh, trailer, it, I, clearly it's Ryan Reynolds, but he's not just doing Deadpool. Like, it is a Ryan Reynolds. And it's not he's not doing Ryan Reynolds either. He's making a character there. Yeah. Which I'm all about. I love it. Yeah. I'll be there opening night with you. Let's go. We, we'll play Pokemon Go, in, or maybe Pokemon, or let's go Pokemon Eevee, Eevee, Juju. What is it called? Let's let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu. Okay. Where's the Pokemon in the title? Pokemon, Pokemon let's go. Is it Pokemon colon, let's go colon, Pikachu Eevee? No, it's, is just, it it's just Pokemon. Pokemon colon, let's go, comma, Pikachu exclamation. Because we're talking straight to Pikachu and Eevee, correct? This is, this is a command, right? It's like me going, hey, let's go, Pikachu. I think so. I don't know, man. I'm, you lost me. Sorry. I know you got a noggin. That hurts. <laughs> uh, number two on the Roper Report. XO18 was this weekend. Many of you joined us live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games for the party as it turned out to be because this wasn't E3. It was let's just hang out and see what Xbox has got. And I think gamesindustry.biz described it as like their advertorial or whatever, their advertisement for everything. What did you expect? For from game guys? Yeah. But we thought we'd break it down for you today in uh, bullet points. These are not this isn't everything that happened at the Xbox event. This is uh, some of the high points for it. Mm hmm. Well, there was a huge push for Xbox Game Pass. Uh, this is for straight from Xbox over on uh, The Wire. Uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, PUBG, will be available to all members of Xbox Game Pass beginning November 12th. Thief of Thieves is officially available on Xbox One and Xbox Game Pass today, which was actually Saturday. Thief of Thieves being this Robert Kirkman book that I did not know about, that it yeah. slipped past me. And it looks really cool. Yeah, meant to download it when I got home. Totally forgot. Yeah. I'll get to it eventually. One day. <laughs> uh, Agents of Mayhem, MXGP3, and Thomas Was Alone uh, are going to be coming to Xbox Game Pass November 22nd. Ori in the Blind Forest, Kingdom Two Crowns, and Hellblade Sen Senua's uh, Sacrifice. Senua Sacrifice uh, is coming to Xbox Game Pass this December. Uh, starting this holiday, the list includes for Xbox Game Pass, After Charge, Supermarket Shriek, Mutant Year Zero, Pathological 2, The Good Life, Void Bastards, which was a game announced at this showcase, which is coming to other stuff. Uh, console launch exclusive, I believe on Xbox though, mm -hmm. uh, and is from one of the directors of Bioshock and, and Secret Neighborhood. Uh, furthermore, uh, Xbox confirmed Ori and Will of the Wisps will be available in Xbox Game Pass timed to its global release on Xbox One and Windows PC in 2019. Plus, starting over the weekend through January 3rd, you can sign up for Xbox Game Pass and receive your first full month for just a dollar. What do you think of that? Great. Right? I mean, honestly, like... I feel like the Game Pass stuff is so important to focus on and to get as many people in as possible. And yeah. like, knowing that all the first party titles are just part of it, which is why it's weirdly phrased here. The furthermore, we confirmed Ori and the Will of the Wisp will be available. Wouldn't that be? Are they not? Correct me if I'm wrong. Kind of funny. No. That, now you've lost me already. They're an exclusive for sure, obviously. Yeah. I, I think it was just uh, memory serves when they originally were like, hey, and gets Xbox Game Pass, it's all of our first part, or it's all of our exclusive lineup, including Crackdown. Mm -hmm. they, they listed games, so that gives them an out, I think. I don't think so. No? Yeah, okay. no, no. You, they, they, they were like, all first party titles okay. are day and date. Let us know if I'm wrong about that. Kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought that was awesome. I think, you know, 
Again, you we'll get to uh, you know. Let's recap it all and we'll just cover it. Mm-hmm. Crackdown three now has an official, official, official release date, February fifteenth, twenty nineteen. Uh, sea of Thieves is changing in a big way with its fifth free content update since launch. The Arena will be releasing in twenty nineteen. It's an all new competitive game mode that allows players to test their pirating skills in fast paced matches against rival crews. State of Decay two on November sixteenth is getting a Zed Hunter update. Fortnite will start supporting keyboard and mouse on Xbox One uh, on Wednesday, and then they announced the. <laughs> Acquisition, acquisition of two new studios that'll be exclusive in exile and obsidian obsidian of course uh south park uh stick of truth and fallout new vegas being mm-hmm. their biggest things there tim yes we're removed from it yep you might be concussed what you did you think of xbox 018 the thing is i feel like it, it was very disappointing from a hype announcement standpoint and from a like surprises and from big deals yeah i thought it was very well paced and a a fun show for xbox fans and i think that it did a great job selling game pass for people that aren't already sold on it yeah and it just reaffirm to me where xbox is as a company they're like look we're building look we are we're, we're trying there, there are key focus points for us, including Game Pass, including acquiring studios that we're working on now so that we can set up the pins to knock them down for next generation. We just keep seeing that over and over and over. I think not seeing any of the giant big titles, no Gears, no Halo, uh, no new IP shown sure. from those new partners. Which was surprising. I thought it was very us, surprising. Not um, to Christine Steimer. She's the only one on the pre-show bet that said, no, they're not going to show a new um, IP. But it's like, Exclusive cool. IP. So this, this was... What we expected, not what it could have been. And I, I feel like when you look at it through that lens, it's like, all right, cool. It was it was a fun thing. It was a fun Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't regret it happening. Um, <laughs> which I, there has been situations where I see things. I'm why do like, we why waste our do time? This? Why, why, do why are you even yeah, doing yeah. this? Um, I think that this, I would love to see a lot more of these. I would love that for uh, Inside Xbox to be this always. Sure. You know? Um, but I feel like at the end of the day, the level of announcements made here weren't that much bigger than a normal inside Xbox. And okay. the production value was a lot higher. And the uh, the look of it and everything was cool. I loved the hype. I loved the crowd being there. Um, I'm seeing a ton of people say like, oh, the crowd was bought off. No, ladies and gentlemen, that was a real authentic crowd that was hyped to be there. Sure. Like, that's hilarious. Um, it's. I think if you don't go to live events or Doom as much as we do, you don't maybe necessarily understand the excitement of something coming to your city, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think for Mexico City to have, hey, we're doing the Xbox, we're bringing back, you know, this the XO uh, presentation. We're going to do this thing. We're going to announce this thing. Phil Spencer, Jeff, you know, Major Nelson. Like, that's all exciting and cool, especially if you're dialed into that yeah. audience, right? The same way, like, PSX is a fucking mm-hmm. party, right? And everybody's so jazzed to be there. I think the most important takeaway from this event was I love Xbox's commitment to... Uh, making acquiring new studios mm-hmm. something to be excited about sure. and a newsworthy thing that that is what their announcement that they're going to make on stage. I just feel like when we look at the history of video game press conferences, uh, we've seen kind of a, lo- a lot of shifts. There used to be a lot of charts and graphs and money and sales and all this stuff. And then they're like, no, 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 we can be better than this. And then it kept going. And now we're at a point where it's like press conferences for the most part are really tight, buttoned up things that are here's trailer, trailer, trailer. Here's some like like important people on stage saying things that were that are relevant and yeah. people care about. They're great. Um, but I feel like <laughs> studio announcements in the past weren't something that they're trying to let the mainstream audience know. Sure. Well, here's the thing is you and I differ, not 100%, obviously, but differ on this event. I thought this event was great, but I also, my expectations were for, for this. And mm-hmm. I think they delivered it in a really fun way. I think it was a really cool crowd. We had fun watching it. This wasn't, you're talking about buttoned up press conferences, right? This wasn't what that was. And I never expected that to be this. And I expected this to be, yes, this kind of party that hopefully was a little like PSX. And it was. Well, I mean, here's my thing. Like the 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 word expect is weird because mm-hmm. for me it's like I, I expected this. Yeah. I wanted more. And I feel like there should be more. We've seen other companies do more. Sure, but I, I don't I, I think for us, the, literally us, the people who read the tea leaves and talk about this and try to break down what we're hearing, we just know they're not there. Yeah. Like I, I didn't expect them to say, and here's the initiative's game. Like the initiative isn't ready for that yet. My argument to that is then don't do it. Like, who are you doing this for then if it's not for us? Like, why right. Why not just have this be a normal thing and not hype it up in a way that it's something And that's where it gets it interesting, right? Where I was like, I don't think they hype this up all. They blah, blah. And you guys were like, well, no, like you and all of what's good was like, no, Major Nelson's been tweeting about there's this. Somebody been, else they, said this thing. They, yeah, there's been a lot of little things. And like the, the one tweet that everybody's breaking down that we were talking about 
in our reaction content yeah. from Major Nelson going in about the hype levels being not quite E3, but whatever. Close, it's like, yeah. There's ways you can look at the sentence structure and be like, oh, he's talking about how much he's going to be tweeting about the thing or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Like, it, sure. it, it, No matter what way you're looking at it, it's like we're we're comparing this now to E3. We're comparing this to sure. PSX. We're comparing it to a Nintendo Direct. We're comparing it to a lot of different things. And while I do feel like it, it, it was very entertaining, it was good. It yeah. was good. Yeah. I just think you that wanted more. I want Microsoft to have its own thing that we can look forward to every year. Now, here's what I'm going to. So where I was driving with the original point, uh, you said, you know, it's a great way to get out to the mainstream or, or why are you doing this for the mainstream or so your announcements can mm-hmm. be mainstream. What I love about this and I've gone back and forth and I've, I've said before and I've talked about, you know, Xbox laying this foundation, yada, yada, yada. This was such a great way of energizing that Xbox fan base that is still there, that does play everything primarily on Xbox and loves their Xbox and is so into their gamer score and so into Game Pass. And, you know, the same way I am about a PlayStation ecosystem, that Xbox ecosystem and watering that and taking care of those people. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to do something like this to show to get them excited for them to be excited. Mm -hmm. And with all due respect to everybody else, fuck everybody else. I don't care like what, you know, Joe Blow or what we're saying on Gamescast. We're not in the Xbox ecosystem that way. Right. Like if the kids are coming out of that excited, if they're excited about this if they're excited about the studio announcements if they're excited like yes thank you for showing you're putting money back into the xbox you're putting that money back into this ecosystem you're putting resources back in that's why i'm gonna keep playing here that's what the mission i think was to accomplish for them i get that and you're absolutely right i just think and again this is as somebody that uh is currently much more a playstation and nintendo focused gamer yeah with the exception of third-party games that i rather play on xbox one x sure because they've won me over with that with hey, the yeah. way that they've talked about the teraflops like, they're, and i'm they're, not joking like it looks doing, way better they're, right they're, they're doing yeah. a lot of right moves and like they're building towards a better future but but at the end of the day, when you, like PSX does that for you, but PSX also gives us Last of Us 2. Sure. It also gives us Uncharted. It also gives us like Final Fantasy 7 remake footage. It also gives us like any year there's always been something from PSX that's like, holy shit. Oh shit, that's interesting. Yeah. And like last year's was the least interesting. Sure. Um, but we still got like some some cool announcements and whatever. Um, but I, I just feel like, like there should be more. Yes, this was fine. Debatably good. If that's what you're looking for. But there's not a single person out there that can tell me that I'm in the Xbox ecosystem. I got this and I wouldn't have liked something more. Mm. Tim's happiness writes in to kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey all Tim's happiness here. Thought he would be okay without me. But after I watched the XO 18 stream, I flipped over to kind of good after show and realized that I've completely abandoned him. Tim, if you can hear me, I'm sorry. I'm coming home back to the show. Uh, I turned into a two hour Xbox advertisement uh, for Game Pass. And for me personally, that's completely awesome. I made the decision earlier this year to rely on Game Pass for a majority of my games going forward and seeing the continued support of the service is great. Combine all the first party games launching into Game Pass with the new studio announcements and there's a lot to be excited about. Parentheses that yet to be announced $60 Obsidian game will be made available at no extra cost through Game Pass the day it launches and parentheses. I don't need a date for Ori 2 or another trailer for Halo or Gears on the screen to be get excited. We know those are coming. Since E3 2017, Microsoft has been extremely clear in their messaging and taking moments like this to further back up that messaging. Parentheses, big game pass and new studio announcements. End parentheses. Uh, shows they are putting their money where their mouth is and making investments that will pay off for Xbox for the gamers in the Xbox ecosystem. I think the show accomplished the goal of keeping their message alive and gives me as an Xbox gamer a reason to look forward to future announcements. Yeah, totally. Totally. But I mean, just that a lot of this, though, is like, you're right, we're going to get Ori 2 and we're going to get Halo in years. But until then, what am I playing on an Xbox? And like, that's my thing is like, yeah, yeah they're putting their money where the mouth is. What have you done for me lately? Like, sure. What, what, what's going on? What's right in now? the immediate future is making me only play on Xbox. And it's like, games, Game Pass is to me, the, and I said this the day that it was announced, the biggest deal in video games that I think I've ever seen while covering games news. Sure. That happening is like, this is going to change the fucking game. Yeah. But we're not seeing that yet. You know, we're seeing that that get built up. And I really think that we're going to see a throwdown in the next couple of years. Um, but until we're seeing these titles, we're just getting state of decay. Which, All right. you know what I mean? By I know. That, I do. I know. It's, I do. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. And that's what I'm saying. I just feel like, yeah, Xbox has to do something. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can sit there and be like, well, we don't have a big gun to fire. So yeah. we, I think they get, they go out and they make the hype and they make Game Pass more and more valuable and more and more worth it. I, I just think that like games like Ori 2, right? And, and Ori and Cuphead, like if Cuphead had been part of Game Pass and stuff, that would have been a great answer to this. That's a smaller title. 
you know, but it's it would have been a thing that got even more people playing, even more sales, and that's there'd be more goodwill towards Xbox's current lineup. Uh, Ori 2 coming is going to be, in my opinion, the first major Game Pass title that I'm like, I'm in for that. Sure. You know, well, um, um, Sea of Thieves was a, a brilliant move for them. They're now allowed to say how many players are, are playing it because everyone's playing it that's on Game Pass. Yeah. Right? It's like that. It's a brilliant marketing strategy, and it seems to be paying off for them. I just feel that we need to start getting these games yeah. on that system for it to be worth it. You talk about it being a game changer, Junie writes in, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, to kindoffunny.com slash KFGDN says, two for one on this question. With Microsoft being crazy enough to put all their first party games into Game Pass, do you guys think that Sony would ever follow suit with PlayStation Now and add their first parties day and date? Also, with there being so many additive services like PlayStation Now, do you think PlayStation would ever consider a tier approach to PlayStation Plus? Say $40 for just online, $60 to add instant game collection, and then $80 to add in PS Now. Now, these prices are all guesstimates, and knowing PlayStation will probably be higher than I think, but a digital-focused future coming... Do you think it's a... Spo- oh, with a digital-focused future coming, do you think it's a possibility? Thanks for everything, guys. You keep it the good work, Junie. I definitely think that's all possible. I don't think it's likely anytime soon, but yeah. I, I do feel it's one of those things where once it's out of the bottle, you can't put it back in. Uh, once they commit to it and offer that type of service, I think that's going to be when we're here to stay. And it, we've talked about this so much on the show uh, in the last year, but... For a long time, there was a conversation of an all digital future. Mm-hmm. I feel like now we're starting to wrap our heads around a um, mostly digital future, not all, sure. where it's still there is options for for people that want to go all in, and the people that are like, I'm still going to go physical or don't have the internet speeds to be able to keep sure. up with all of this. And I can see PlayStation trying to come up with a solution for that, um, where they they split their focus and still sell their games at retail price, just like Microsoft's doing, mm-hmm. but also building a amazing ecosystem that has all their first party titles available for one monthly price. The thing about it, remember, is the reason and I'm I'm I don't know this. I'm not on the inside of the boardroom. The reason Xbox is so aggressive with Game Pass and the reason they're doing this amazing deal and putting all this stuff right is because they're trying to make up ground mm-hmm. and they're trying to start building the wrecking ball for why Xbox next or whatever the Scarlet or whatever or Xbox in general is the best place to play. PlayStation doesn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man just sold better than any PlayStation exclusive ever. They are not about to go take their first party stuff and dump it into PS now because they don't need to. They're Mm -hmm. making too much money the other way. If pendulum shifts and swings on Scarlet Generation or whatever comes after this, the next iterative cycle of consoles, that's when PlayStation has to get hungry and come up with an idea and figure out, oh shit, we need to actually play defense for a second right yeah. now they can just run out and do whatever they want and keep running away with it you know we just talked about it last week on uh friday's kind of funny games daily the fact that what is it it's no I'm, now i'm rusty don't please don't you're wrong me on it uh it's what more than 275 million dollars was made last quarter in these online uh, instant uh, streaming services right playstation now being 52 53 percent of that yeah. like they are doing awesome. And that's the th- and we've talked about it on this show, right? Where it's like, oh man, PlayStation now. Oh, I, I don't use it. Blah, 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 blah. Like it's 52%. Like a lot of people do use it and it's making them money. And, it does and, have and they PS4 downloads now. Exactly. And they're not including this kind of stuff in there. So no, they're not worried about doing this. So the, the counter argument to that is I honestly wouldn't be surprised, even though they are winning, even though they are selling well and stuff. It, it's obviously working for Xbox where it's like these numbers are benefiting them significantly. Sure. And that's not just because they're losing. Like this, there is a business strategy here that works. And if PlayStation has 52%, don't you think they want 80? Yeah. You know? But, I, like, I, but I, th- I, here's the thing is, I, he's, uh, uh, Junie, sorry, is they are saying, hey, would they, ta- would they say, be crazy enough to put all their first party games in? No. Some, yes. Because now, now I think you get to the question of, all right, Days Gone has been out and I, I, I'm even talking like past, right? Mm-hmm. Or a uh, future days gone has been out two months. It didn't sell that well. We do not Is it a PlayStation plus game now? Or do we make a big deal about it being on uh, PlayStation now yeah. where, Hey, you can get in there. You can get this right now and play it all the way and try the streaming service and download it. I just think that from everything that we've talked about in the past, we're not, like the world's not equipped and ready for an all digital future, sure. which means that the people that w- would be interested in this PlayStation now thing, it's a very limited subsect of the potential of people buying games. And that was the thing too, of the thing from Friday, right? It was, it's like $275 million, which is 6% of all money made by video games in the quarter. So it's not, yeah. th- this isn't like a, like that's a lot of money, obviously for us 
yeah. chuckle heads. Well, I mean, six percent. Yeah. That's that's big. And again, yeah. what if they can get that higher? What if they can? And, and if PlayStation came out, and we're like, yeah, no, fuck it, Spider Man's there too. Hey, everything. It's it's just like Microsoft. That'd be for every all the ground Microsoft's made up. Yeah, wouldn't Sony just come in and be like, ha, we got you, bitches. It's a great question. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and it's like, and then they're still selling the physical copies. I still yeah. think Spider Man would be one of the top selling PlayStation games of all time physically because we just saw that with Sea of Thieves. Like yeah. Sea of Thieves being there, whatever stat they they put on it, they put on it the the uh, XO eighteen event where they were like, it's the best selling uh, new IP on, Xbox and people are like, well, does that include like that? the free downloads? And, and they are no. not free, it's but you like, know, they're, they're like, no. it's just sales. And I think that it's, when you start looking at that, I don't know. Maybe that that's more people buying days gone. It's maybe very it's, interesting, and I feel I was wrong about PlayStation now, and not not wrong, but like it's doing really well, right? And it was that question of man, is it doing well? Xbox keeps talking about mm-hmm. Game Pass. You see all this stuff. Clearly, it's doing well without PlayStation having to do much with it. Yeah. And so the fact that they aren't advertising it more and they aren't making it more attractive, uh, you, I do wonder. As I wondered when I thought it wasn't, maybe it wasn't doing that well. Are they waiting for something big? Are they waiting for a big announcement? Are they waiting for a big push? Are they waiting for the next console? When when yeah. do they pull a trigger? And, and, yeah. And I, I feel like for them, because they've had this lineup, I don't know. Just hear me out for a second, Greg. Imagine Everybody this. listen to Tim. PlayStation 5, right? Hey, yeah. it's coming out. It, there's going to be physical games on it, but also there's a big focus on uh, digital streaming, downloads, all that. PlayStation Now? They don't even call it that. They just come out and I like, definitely they, think they, they rebrand they it. They totally rebrand it, but they don't even mention the rebranding it. They just come out and they're just like, whatever it's called, PlayStation Game Collection or in, whatever it is. Yeah. And the Instant Game Collection or whatever they used to call it. And it's all the PS4 games, they're on it. Yeah. All those first party hits from the last generation. Like, and, and even yeah. going further yeah, yeah. back, right? They're all there day one on this console. That would sell consoles. Oh, yeah, 100%, right? 100%. And that would sell subscription services for people that will never stop paying month after month after month in and addition that, to buying. And that's games. the thing is I do, I'm with you of, I think that happens regardless. I think that is what PlayStation Now is becoming. It's just a question of, does Sony want to make a big deal about that and be like, all right, maybe you didn't make, you know, come around last console, blah, 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 and this, it's streaming and it's this, and, it, and then, yeah, here's everything you missed on this PlayStation Now. But I think it's everything you missed and... Going, going forward. forward. Oh, Every, my apologies. My apologies. I, okay. I, and again, I don't know, but I'm sure that they're looking at the dollar signs and moving them around and looking at the the map of America and the map of the world when it comes to internet. internet yeah. And and like trying to understand. And I'm sure that there is a a science to to boil down like an equation the to fig, point. To, to figure out. Well, hey, at the end of the day. X amount of people, no matter what, are not going to subscribe to this because their internet is simply not good enough. Yeah. So we're still relying on so many millions of people buying physical games. Sure. So it's not going to affect the sales there. Whereas we can get a rely rely on a, a consistent subscriber fee of whatever it is, yeah. forty dollars a month or something like that yeah. forever. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And it's going to be interesting. It is. Number three on the Roper Report, Luke Smith, a Destiny director, has uh, tweeted this. It's a simple thing. I just thought it was interesting. On Friday when you weren't here, Fran Mirabella joined us. Mm -hmm. We did a a Destiny 2 thing about how in an Activision earnings call, they were like, we're not happy with the way Forsaken sold, right? Luke Smith fired off on Twitter. We are not disappointed with Forsaken. We set out to build a game that Destiny players would love. And at Bungie, we love it too. Building Destiny for players who love it is... Love it is and will remain our focus going forward. A simple f- clap back to this. Yep. And it, it doesn't negate what Activision uh, said in their shareholders call or whatever. But it also then a lot of people bring up the fact that, you know, I think it might have even been uh, Jason Trier quote, commenting on this of like, you know, the relationship between Activision and Bungie has always seemed tumultuous. Mm-hmm. And now it's kind of even a public tiff, right? Mm-hmm. And this guy says something on a earnings call and then he hears uh, Luke Smith saying something on Twitter about it as well. Of yeah. course, I think Destiny uh, as pro- or Bungie is happy with Forsaken because it is what the hardcore Destiny players want. You Hearing Fran talk about it, he gets those heart googly eyes and yeah. just, you know, talks about yeah, exactly how much they've nailed it and how happy he is and how he's trying to get everybody back to it so that's great yeah I, I love this type of stuff it's like hey transparency is great like let's if there's a, a kerfluffle a problem on the internet respond to it yeah yeah but I, it's interesting because i i don't when i read this c- quote from luke right or when i see this tweet i'm like well yeah i, I we know you're happy with it like i i figured you're well, you're happy with it and the audience is happy with it but it's more the the thing of is activision happy yeah with it? people but are paying i, I think it's games. important because it's like even though we can say we know there's, we are not disappointed with Forsaken. Like that is, you can't mince those words. Sure, Bungie, this is their stance. 
So, uh, final story on the Roper Report comes from U.S. Gamer, where Matt Kim wrote about Chicago's PlayStation tax. I'm going to read this in full, so please go over to U.S. Gamer, give them a click. Uh, PlayStation gamers will now be subject to the same amusement tax that other Chicago residents face when they try to have a nice weekend by going to the amusement park or a concert. The 9% tax will hit PlayStation services on November 14th, and the tax will be levied on PlayStation Store receipts, including PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, PlayStation View, PlayStation Music, PlayStation Video On Demand, and PlayStation Video Live events. Reports from PlayStation users say they began receiving a notice of the tax earlier this week. Additional reports suggest local taxes will roll out to PlayStation in other areas, including New York City. Sony began enforcing local tax policies on PSN since 2016, and local taxes can affect everything from digital content to Amazon purchases, depending on where you live. PlayStation isn't the only digital service affected by Chicago's amusement tax. Spotify, Netflix, and Xbox are all subjected to the same taxes enacted under Mayor Rahm Emanuel uh, and has seen Netflix raise subscription prices in Chicago. The tax has also been called the Hamilton tax after its effect over the population popular Broadway musical Hamilton, which is also taxed in Chicago. Mm. The tax isn't popular in the city of Chicago, but Emanuel says the taxes are necessary to shore up the city's pensions. Several companies like Apple and Netflix are taking action against the city for the taxes, but until any changes are made, PlayStation gamers are now subject to the same tax as other amusement activities. Interesting. We talk about this digital future and all that stuff like... I hadn't heard about this in terms, uh, you know, and I'm from the Chicago area or whatever. Not that that would matter, but I haven't heard about the Xbox One or that. And it's just an interesting thing of like, oh yeah, yeah. It's you. Everything's gonna change. Every, it's gonna be all we, new rules. Everyone is gonna nickel and dime you every which way, trying to make sure they get their cut of this. Yeah, it's very fascinating. It's gonna be interesting to see Apple and Netflix fighting and if they can get over it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I hadn't heard of this, so just food for thought. Yeah, look Things out. Things are changing, man. Where are you going? I was waiting for the... That was a good pregnant pause. Okay. We had okay. a good pregnant pause. Yeah, I like trying to make we people look at their phones. Me and Andrea had them really dead to rights yeah. a couple weeks ago. Uh, Tim, I can't wait to see what's happening with this uh, amusement tax and these lawsuits oh, and all that so stuff. Excited, but it's right? so far away to find out what will happen in the courtroom if I wanted something more immediate. Like what came to the mom and grub shops? Where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Yeah. Cool, Greg. My tie clip, my tie clip was crooked for 36 minutes on this show. Where you at, man? You know, think about it. Just think about Just it. Just think about it. All right. <laughs> Out today, Pig Eat Ball, the 2D yummy barfing arcade game is now on Steam. You remember Pig Eat Ball? I don't. Oh, really? Pig Eat Ball. Oh, maybe no. you've never been with me. I've played Pig Eat Ball at many, I'm going back to, woof, man, one of the GDC indie events when we were still working at IGN. Yeah. Because it's a one it's a one man team making okay. Piggy Ball. It's a fun That's multiplayer out. game. Okay. It's gonna be a party mode eventually, okay. but yeah, it's out on Piggy Steam Ball. right now. Great name. Uh new dates for you. Echo Combat, the latest installment of Ready at Dawn's Echo VR franchise, launches this Thursday, November 15th. Desert Child races on a Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC Mac slash Linux on December 11th. It's gonna be on the 12th on Xbox. For the King's next DLC <laughs> adventure, Into the Deep releases for free on November 21st. Uh, Aragami Switch Edition has been pushed to 2019. Uh, Megalith Betas starts tomorrow on PlayStation VR for free. And then Chim Party swings to PlayStation 4 tomorrow. All right, it's one of them on. Play Link games. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's like one of them party ones. Chim oh, Party, you want to see the trailer? I do. Cool, Greg. Yeah. Can you go to that sweet, nasty YouTube real quick? Oh, man, my hair's crazy, too. Stupid fall out helmet. I, uh, I need a haircut bad, Chim Party too. Swings. You know what I mean? I need a haircut bad. It? Chim Party. Think Chimp Artie. Or chimp like party, chimp. but only one P. Uh, while you do that, I'm going to run you through deals of the day. Please do. We have two Black Friday things. This is from Xbox and PlayStation. Not together. Xbox says, uh, Xbox is offering deep discounts up to 100% off select Xbox One consoles, bringing the Xbox One X down to its lowest price ever, <laughs> starting at $399.99. Uh, you can score your first, we talked about this, Game Pass month for $1. Xbox Live Gold is also doing uh, the first month for just a dollar. It's 10 dimes. That's true. We're offering savings as Xbox, not me. On titles such as Forza Horizon 4, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, and more, but you should check out their whole Black Friday post for that information. Then PlayStation Black Friday deals read like this. A new Marvel... There been The Spider-Man PS4 bundle is out. What the fuck? Really? A new... Sp- yeah, oh, it's not a pro. Okay, I see what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Spider- you can get the Spider-Man Standard Edition PS4 bundle for 200 bucks. Wow. Yeah. 
You can, Damn. you can get a DualShock 4 wireless controller for four, 40 bucks at participating retailers. PlayStation VR systems are now available for $200. And PlayStation Plus is offering discounts on the 12-month subscription. It's great deal. This is Chim Party here. You can see it's one of them PlayLink games. Pull it up. Cool, yeah, Greg. can you go picture? Oh, shoot, hey, shoot, we know him. Uh, you play with your phone. Uh, I, I think I made a comment to... Uh, oh, that's... Uh, Tom Holland. No, uh, Brian Deckert uh, uh, from Detroit Become Human. Uh, I made the comment on one of these shows. Where I was like, yeah, PlayLink's dead. And Andrew's like, not really. And here's proof that no, they're still making PlayLink games. <laughs> They've just been quiet about it. So there you go. Chim Party coming out. A little party game for you. Uh, Tim. Yes. As you know, you love a good deal. I do. You're paying attention. You're reading the tea leaves. You're love excited for Black Friday, cyber yes. stuff, all that jazz. Uh-huh. You love to cyber right here. Mm-hmm. Sammy writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, with Black Friday a few weeks away, I wanted to know if PSN will have a sale and if that would be better or a worse alternative to Cyber Monday to save on games. The real answer for this is like, if you have specific things that you want in the video game world, like go go to IGN and like they do a great uh, deals wrap yep. up thing for Black Friday where like it's and all Cyber the deals Monday, compare, yeah, they run it all compares the down. whole weekend. I've, Amazon has a cute name for like the five days that it is. I, I don't remember what it is, but money, money, money. It's money day, time. day, day. I, 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 I. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how you gotta that's say that's it too. That's how you gotta say it. I would just check them out to see like specifically what you're looking for because I mean like some of these PlayStation deals sound insane, like a Spider Man PS4. With Bundle. the game for two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, wow. they're out there. They're out there trying to kill it. You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. trying to get that money. Um, remember some of this Black Friday stuff because it's going to come in later. Are your ears still ringing? Please go to the doctor. I'll we don't need you on GOG. I'll figure it out. We don't need you. Uh, time for reader mail. But first, I'm going to tell you about our sponsors. Number one, Loot Crate. Are you aware of Loot Gaming? Mm-hmm. It's a monthly subscription box delivered directly to your door with pop culture collectibles, apparel, and gear. Loot Gaming curates, designs, everything's themselves, and you can't find these items anywhere else. How do you know? Because we talk about it all the time. And what do we love drinking out of? Our Metal that. Gear Solid pint glass. The Foxhound pint glass. We exactly. got multiple of them here. Yeah, there was one day where Nick and I were both using, oh, it was that, the GOG we just did where yeah. it was just us, and I was like, that's a good look for us because we both like we, we both like those glasses so much. Great. Uh, yeah. cool Greg of course is subscribed to a whole bunch of different uh, pop culture crates over there from Loot Crate he's yeah. using them left he loves right. those pins he yeah he does that he has them all over the his head. dog pin he has a, show the people while you do that, I'm going to tell you this month's theme is victory, or I'm sorry, it's blade. It, it's victory comes to the edge of a blade. Face your enemies with razor sharp gear from God of War, Elder Scrolls, Kingdom Hearts, and Assassin's Creed. Uh, you get a t-shirt in every crate. It's $60 or more of value for less than $29 a month, and the crate will sell out. So order this week. The best surprises for each month uh, come from Loot Crate, of course, the largest geek and gaming subscription company. Uh, subscribers are also automatically entered to win each month's epic drop. This is one epic drop that you can win each and every month. Uh, right now, it's PlayStation 4 Pro and the God of War bundle. Subscribe now by going to LootCrate.com slash games and enter my code games to save an exclusive 30% off your subscription. That's LootCrate.com slash games. My code games, 30% off the subscription. Up next is Me Undies. The holidays are here, and we have the perfect solution on what to give. Me Undies, of course. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, I have been inundated by my wife sending me links to Me Undies because now they have their holiday onesies up. They have their holiday matching underwear sets up. I got the, I got the onesie, Greg. Did you? Which one? Oh. I don't want. I, I don't want to match you. I, I want to match Jen. One. I got the okay. Green okay. One. It is amazing. There, it has a hoodie. Yeah. Like it's, Did you already get it? Get it? Like got, you have I, it? I, I've been sleeping in it. Greg. It's the same material as it's, the. As this the, is not part of the ad. I'm not even looking at the same, paper. This is the same, same material, material that I love in the underwear. As the undies. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. And I'm just slip sliding around my bed. It is amazing. All right. Well, Jen's gonna get us both of them. I'll let you know. I'll have my own slip sliding adventures. Well, I, guess, the, the, I, w- I was wearing it, and she was like, "I gotta get one." Yeah. You gotta I match. Gotta you gotta it. match. Uh, the, the other thing about the holiday prints is they're releasing a new holiday print each and every Tuesday as they lead mm. into the holidays. There. Uh, men and women can choose from four different cuts for the underwear too, which I did not know. Mm-hmm. All of which are available from classic colors to the adventurous prints. Plus, they have that membership now. Uh, you can get the lounge pants, the tees, the undies, everything. Uh, me undies makes for less than anybody else. Special member pricing is just one of the many perks of joining. Uh, me undies has an offer for you, the listeners. Any first time purchasers, when you purchase any me undies, you get fifteen percent off and free shipping. It's a no brainer. Get fifteen percent off the pair, a pair of the most comfortable underwear you'll ever put on. Get fifteen percent off your first pair, free shipping, and a one hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash GamesDaily. That's MeUndies.com slash GamesDaily. 
And finally, Third Love has an offer for all the kind of honeys out there. It's the perfect bra. Using thousands of real women's measurements, Third Love designs its bras with breast size and shape in mind so that they fit impeccably and feel even better. You mm-hmm. can skip the trip and find your perfect fit in 60 seconds online. Order, try it at home. No more awkward fitting room experiences. Gia loves her strapless ones. Does, her bo- her friends' boyfriends love the black lacy one. And my, loves it as well. In my gin, no, it, well, I, is, oh, is that true? That is I, true. I'll have to amend the copy. And Jen and didn't love hers. She bought one that was too big, but Third Love's free and easy returns made it simple for her to send it back and get the right one, which she did. Uh, Third Love takes its customer input seriously, and that's why they've launched their most requested style, cotton. You can get cotton bras in undies right mm-hmm. now at Third Love. Sounds Third Love soft. knows there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash games now to find your perfect fitting bra. That's 15% off your first purchase. Uh, thirdlove.com slash games for 15% off today. Remember everything I just said. Holidays are coming. Mm-hmm. You are running out of time. Presents do it now. Everyone. You keep doing that thing or you'll do it later. I'll do it later. You're not going to do it later. They're going to end up with a bad candy box nobody wants. Mm. Me undies. William from San Antonio writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey guys, long time, first time. Mm-hmm. With the sad news of Stan Lee's death today, do you think that there will be any memorials or in-game events or anything like that in Spider-Man to commemorate his work to the Marvel franchise? If so, what do you expect slash would you like to see? Personally, I'd like to see a big old statue of him. Thanks mm-hmm. for all that you guys do and keep up the good work, William. That would be really cool. I, I guarantee it. You think? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it'll be a well, a statue might be doable. Yeah. Guarantee right now Insomniac is like we gotta do something. You figure they still have one more DLC for December. You're right, you're right. Yeah. And here's and this isn't a spoiler, but stick with me. I'm not gonna reveal the event. There's a big event that happens in the game. Mm-hmm. If you remember well, I don't know if you know the story, so that doesn't help you at all. A big event that public happens in a public square in the game. And uh, bad things happen. If you go to that game in the DLC, there's a plaque there commemorating that event in the game. Oh. And I think I could see them doing something like that, even if it is. I don't. Can we spoil Spider-Man at this point? Anything no, about Spider-Man? I wouldn't. Even if it is just, you know, a, a plaque in a random place that you would expect to find Stanley. Something to that effect. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I bro. think I'm the third one. There will be some kind of nod to Stan. I don't know great. what that means. I don't think, uh, sadly, I don't think it'll be as intense as they'd love to, uh, as we'd all love it to be. I mean, the, the I thought that it was unlikely just because like the game's done, but yeah, you're right. The DLC is coming and like, th- I don't know how hard it would be to make something like a statue and put it even in there, if it, I mean, uh, and let's just dial it back even more than that. Right. In the credits of episode three, prob- in the yep. credits for episode two, they're probably patching right now to be able to say, you know, in memory of Stanley or yeah. something like that. I think that's what you'll see there. And, and but then beyond that, I think for the rest of eternity, yep. every Marvel game you get, will have some nod, some reference, yeah, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some, sure. some love, uh, lo- loving touch put somewhere for him. Because of course, a horribly, uh, a very very sad day today, right? Yeah. You you want to honor a man who's done so much good for comics. John Sriracha Shea writes into kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says, I am the owner of a launch PS4 and it's pretty damn loud. I've considered getting a PS4 Pro, but have been on the fence since my launch PS4 still runs well. With the PlayStation 5 not far away and the new quieter PlayStation 4 Pro being just released, do you think it's worth upgrading at this point or should I hold off until the PS5? Thanks for all you do and give Big Kev Dog a hug from a fellow AV tech. I'm just going to be real honest with you. Be real honest. Real, being real honest here, Greg, I don't think we're ever going to see a PlayStation console that doesn't sound like a jet taken off. Dude, my PlayStation 4 Pro, I, I was you know working on my Assassin's Platinum and doing all that stuff. It sounded just... <laughs> The entire time, I'm like, motherfucker, I got to get up and right. air you? Or I guess so. Yeah, yeah. My, my PS4 Pro does. We've had how many PS4 regular and pros yeah. in this office? Yeah. I don't know about this new model CUH. That was, that was something that uh, I think Digital Foundry or somebody did something last week late. Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, yeah, the new PlayStation 4 Pro is actually a lot quieter. Cool. We'll see how long that lasts. I don't believe it. John, my, the PS5 my is gonna t- fix as it. a PlayStation 4 Pro owner, I bought it because my other PlayStation 4 was finally pooping out. That's why I bought it. If your PlayStation 4 is running fine, I don't see the point. You, I know you're way more I bells and PS4 whistles Pro, and resolution yeah. and all that jazz. Uh, but then again, the Xbox One X like is so much better. So what do you say? Just wait it out? Black Friday, a lot of deals like we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's the thing. If you, it really depends on what you're looking to get out of this thing. Like, It's going to be real nice playing Death Stranding and Last of Us Part 2 on a PS4 Pro. Sure. So eh, maybe... That'll be close enough to a PS5. We don't know. Mm-hmm. Charles Jacobson writes in 
to kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, after listening to a heated discussion during XO 18 between Andrea and Tim about the crackdown three scores, I woke up Sunday and thought of a question for Tim. He said smash ultimate will be the best best and best selling smash, but he also thinks spirits and other parts of the game will drag down the score. So my question is this. Will it be the best rated smash based on Metacritic? The current numbers are as follows, and this is as of 11-11. Super Smash Brothers, 79. Super Smash Brothers Melee, 92. Super Smash Brothers Brawl, 93. Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, 92. Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS, 85. That means, if we don't include the 3DS, uh, the 3DS version, Console Smash remains 92 to 93 since Melee. So, for the sake of my question, let's not... Let's just say we'll average 93 and no and no, none of this quote. It would be if they remove this and that end quote. It's based on the game as it launches. It's a tough one. I stand by the sales. The reviews, I, it really can go either way, but I, I probably would say that this is going to end up being the highest rated Smash game. I think it's because uh, just the way that people review games and like just knowing the pro- being on the inside of that process and also when it's games like Smash Brothers, um, I think more people are interested in this Smash than ever before. Yep. And I feel like that gets taken in consideration with review scores of this type of game. Um, and I think that it's going to get a higher score than the Wii U version. And... Because of that, I think that it's going to end up averaging out at least I, I, at least a ninety three. I think. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be the highest scoring smash. I think. I agree with you, right? If people are gonna ding it on stuff, it's gonna be, hey, oh man, the story's not that great. But you can say the story's not that great, and then also realize that there's how many characters in the fucking game? Seventy six or something ridiculous I mean, like that. Depending if you count echoes and stuff, it, it's like, like close to eighty. The breadth of content that's there, right? This giant, like it's everything you mm-hmm. that uh, that's not going to be lost on people in terms of what they're looking for. Yeah, I, I'm really interested in seeing reviews for this game, like just in terms of like what they, how deep they go, because I don't think that too many reviewers are going to be super deep on it. In terms of I'm like, and not to shit talk people, but it's just like I don't think people are going to like try to like really play through all the different modes sure. in a significant way. They're going to play a little bit of Spears and be like, all right, cool, whatever, and like ding a little bit for this, but they're not going to like fully commit to the whole thing. Then they're going to talk about the, I think, the the week of time they played with it, right? And and after our parties and exactly. how much fun it was and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so and because no of tripping. that, I, I I think it's safe to say it'll be the best review Smash Brothers game. Will it average higher than a ninety three? I I don't know because that is still pretty high. Yeah. You know, like you, they would, it would have to get a lot of tens for it to get bumped up there in the Metacritic, but it could do it. I believe it. Jake from Mizzou, M I Z, writes in to kindofunny.com slash KFGD and says, For a J1100 project, we have to create a news outlet complete with a mission statement, code of ethics, audience engagement strategy, and business plan. Uh, we decided to make a podcast in my group. I was assigned the business plan and I'm focusing it around Patreon. I mostly understand how Patreon works, but how do you guys choose or obtain your ads for the show? I have to discuss specific advertisers. We would have for our show parentheses. We are focusing on unique international news and was curious. If you've had any ideas by the way, I would have done gaming, but I could not convince my group. <laughs> That's funny. Um, the way that we do advertisements is simple. You link up with a company that focuses purely on uh, matchmaking advertisers to products to be able to put ads in. Brewster Teeth are our group that we have for that. Yeah. Like in the YouTube world, they're called MCNs, uh, multi channel networks, networks um, where there's sales teams that represent different groups and then go out and sell their content. And so for us, for example, Brewster Teeth will have a sales deck that they go out into a bunch of different companies because there's uh, companies that advertising companies that specifically focus in podcast advertisement. Sure. So Rooster Teeth will go to them, have a, a whole presentation slide deck, and it'll be like, here's all Rooster Teeth shows. Here's kind of funny's lineup. And it's like Game Over Greggy Show, Gamescast, this, this. W- alongside it are a bunch of our stats about the show and like random information for them to understand what they'd be buying. Then they take it to those companies, and those companies represent a ton of different brands. And they look at all those and go, ooh, this would be a good fit here. This would be a good fit for that show. So it's kind of out of our hands. Sure. Um, but then what I, so what I like about this and how we we are able to do this, right? We're independently owned and operate, operated. We're, we, we're teamed up with Rooster Teeth for this, right? So mm-hmm. they come back to us then and go, hey, 
these brands want to be on the show. Are you guys cool with that? Does this make sense? It to actually you? starts earlier than that. So earlier I don't than even that, know how our business works, everybody. Uh, earlier than that, there's a, a conversation <laughs> where I'd say once a quarter, yeah. um, our salespeople over at Rooster Teeth will do a call with me, and we'll go one by one through a list yes, of, no, yes, no, of potential of um, advertisers. Yeah, and I tell them either no, we don't, we want to pass on them, we don't want their their business. Either yes, we've used them before and and can stand by that, or we're interested, but we want we want to try we want to try the stuff. product. Yeah, we yeah. want we, we want yeah, more yeah. information, um, and then we go through them. And at this point, you know, we've done this for a long time, so like we are pretty familiar with MeUndies and Third Love and all the Blue Apron, man. Blue Apron. Um, and then yeah, then then they take it back, and that that informs them on who they're pitching what. And then outside of that, because we're independent, we can go get our own ad deals, right? Yeah. So if we have a conversation with somebody like, oh, we'd love to advertise with you, we can talk about that, set that up, do whatever, and then just inform Richard Teeth of like, cool, we're not going to, we need less ads this day or however this works. Yeah. And uh, so to answer your question specifically about, um, I have to discuss specific advertisers we would have for our show. Um, it honestly doesn't work that way. It, it's not the type of thing of like, you know what? We're making a show called Love and Sex Stuff. We're going to go to Trojan and get Trojan because that makes sense. That's just not the world that we live in unless you you have an amazing sales team. You sure. could do that. Um, but for a news organization like this, it would definitely be linking up with professionals that do this, solely this, and it would be a process similar to what we did because that's exactly how IGN functions, and they're a lot bigger than us. But instead of them having a middleman sales team, they have their own sales team. Gotcha. That is Their sales team is going to these podcast advertising conglomerates. AdSense, sure. mid roll. They have a whole bunch of fun names. Good job. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Otherwise, I would have just lied and been wrong. Uh, Austin <laughs> T writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey guys, are we due for Watch Dogs 3 in 2019? Hmm. Considering Assassin's Creed is taking another well deserved year long nap, and our front runner for big spring Ubisoft game is The Division 2, I think that makes fall 2019 a prime spot for a possible Watch Dogs 3, especially considering we got Watch Dogs 2 in 2016. If Watch Dogs is coming in the future, where would you like to see it take place? If it isn't coming, coming, I sure hope Splinter Cell is real and ends up taking that fall 2019 spot heart. I'm super surprised we haven't seen Splinter Cell yet. Yeah, me too. I still believe that's our prediction every time. It'll be right? next year. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we just keep predicting that. Watch Dogs, yeah. Watch Dogs 2, I feel, kind of came out of nowhere and then happened. Yeah. Um, the problem with Watch Dogs 2 was very much that that game was awesome. I stand by how much I love that game. And it was a great, I mean, it was a great platinum. It was a great thing. It was a fun story of fun characters. It didn't perform. And I really do think that that makes it very questionable if you're going to go to Watch Dogs 3. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And granted, uh, how it's much... It's Ubisoft, man. They don't give a fuck. I know, I know. And it's how much have we invested in uh, the brand name of that IP? That is an IP. People understand Watch Dogs, right? But do you get a third try to try to like, all right, let's make it resonate with people? And granted, do you get a third try to take every lesson you've learned from Assassin's Creed and Division and For Honor and how to make a game last and make people come back to it all the time? Like, are they going to do that? Or, but... I just feel like even though I tried and I waved that banner of like everybody sleeping on Watch Dogs 2, it's a great game. And they, I remember them discounting it at one point. And it yeah. had like numbers, but it didn't do numbers. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't think it's good. I it, think the, Splinter Cell is way more likely. Is it confirmed that there's no Assassin's Creed next year? Yeah, they said they're taking yeah. another year off. Yeah. Good, good for them. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Odyssey, dude. What a fucking game. Yeah. I crossed 75 hours in it. My God. You know what I mean? And like, I, you know, I'm trying to platinum it, but it's not yeah. even about platinuming it. It's just about like still doing Cassandra's story and stuff. And I finished off the other major storylines yesterday. What Proud a fucking you. game. Final question comes from Fusion Orc. Fusion Orc writes into kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, Tetris effect is so good. It has motivated me to buy a PSVR. Do I need wands or no? Uh, totally depends on what you, what other games you're excited for. Make a list and go from there. If you, I, I still haven't played this game. I saw the launch trailer for it. I'm just like, I'm fucking up. This looks like yeah, such a mean game. It's awesome. But I, now I'm like, I need to play it in VR. Like yeah. I, I need to just set up Kev's and or whoever the hell's is here. It's uh, the office one. Yeah, I have it in my desk. Oh my God. I need to try it. Yeah, you got to. It's amazing in VR. And then, I mean, my next thing, of course, is Beat Sabers this month. And you definitely need Beat wands for that. So if you are if you look at Beat Saber and you're like, yep, then get the wands. And there's a, then you can play super hot that way. And, there, and there's a bunch of different options. But wands are how you want it to be. It's in VR, right? You want to see your hands and wiggle them around. Tim? Yep. It's time to squat up. Yes, it is. This is where one of you writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Bad Mark needs help on PlayStation 4. No, 
It's not his name. That's just what he listed it as. Uh, his PSN name is Marquito underscore TSO. M-A-R-Q-U-I-T-O underscore TSO. Bad Mark says, kind of funny, best friends. You're my only hope. Actually, I'm just looking for help in the last uh, la the last wish raid on Destiny 2. Long story short, my wife and I just had our son. He is just one month old and squeezing 10 minutes here and there to play is hard enough. Several hours is just not realistic. However, my wife is going with him for a week to grandpa's and it's my last chance in a while. At least just the first couple of encounters would be great. I live in Tokyo, so the time difference might be hard, but I can adapt, especially during weekends. Have a great one. Keep doing your awesome. Keep doing your awesome. And thanks. There's no comments there. So I, uh, do we do a your awesome? Is that a segment we do somewhere? You are awesome? No. Uh, an average warlock slash titan marquito underscore TSO. Destiny Guardians. This is a call from a new father that he needs to play some games before the kid eats up all his time and life savings. Hit him up. Marquito underscore TSO. Tim? Yes. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up so we can set the record straight for everybody. What do we mess up today? Uh, sorry, I was on my phone because I panicked realizing the iPad's dead. So I was like, oh, fuck, you're wrong. Mm. And then I had to find it and I didn't have the link ready. Is there no charger down here? I don't know. Something's going on. Cool guy, charger's missing. Kebabs writes in and says the official title of the Let's Go duo of Pokemon games is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu slash Eevee in Greg talk. That's Pokemon colon Let's Go comma Pikachu exclamation mark. Thank you. Exclamation point. It's a question mark. Did you hear my stomach? Yeah. I'm fucking hungry. Oh my God, that, that was intense. Speed it the fuck up. I don't care about your stupid squirrels in a bowl. Austin. What? Austin from Austin says, Greg missed out what was clearly the biggest news from XO18. Winnie the Pooh returns for Kingdom Hearts 3. Hell yeah. I'm right there with you, buddy. Um, Parker Petrov says, Tim and Greg asked about the Ori games and the Game Pass status. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is made by Moon Studios and published by Microsoft, but is not a Microsoft studio. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. And a uh, quote from Phil Spencer, moving forward, we plan to release all new Xbox One exclusive games from Microsoft Studios. Same day and date. Thank you. AAG, that guy says, I was at the XO18 as press. People were not bought off, uh, but there were staff hyping people up because there was a language barrier in which people didn't immediately get what they were hearing. And I get why it felt forced. They did a lot of the hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. That was crazy. Is that a thing in Mexico City? Terrifying. I don't know. Um, Capitalist Pig says, regarding the year Greg first played Piggy Ball, the oh, first time he played Piggy go. Ball was the GDC Indie Mix all the way back in 2012, hosted by IGN. It had the butt wiggle f function that was later took out. I know because I was literally standing right behind you at the time. Fair. Okay. It's good to see Ransom today. Uh, Zaire says, new dates. All six Five Nights at Freddy games are getting HD ports coming to Switch, eight, sorry, Switch Xbox One and PS4 in 2019. Uh, and then finally, Zara says, just checked, and uh, yeah, Greg's still not verified. <laughs> uh, apparently, I got I don't know who was running Kind of Funny Twitter last night. They tweeted me to let them let me know that Kind of Funny vids on Instagram got denied verification. Huh? But I'm like, awesome. I don't know where that notification is coming. Like, mm. I, I checked everything. I got nothing from, I'm just shooting it off into fucking space for Instagram. I don't know, man. Shit sucks, man. Uh, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, on a variety of platforms, we run you. To the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Uh, watch it live. Twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Watch it later. YouTube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Listen on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get it, consider supporting us on Patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames if you like what we do. If you don't, no big deal. See you never again. Yeah. Uh, host for the week. Tuesday, it's Andrea and Tim. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, it's me and Gary Witta. Thursday, it's me and John Phipps. Friday, Greg and Andrea. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>